And we're back in the shade. Yes. I'm glad I showered and stuff for the game, so now I can get dirty again. <sighs> anyway, so a couple things. When I move this, I moved it into the direct sun and they always pout. Some people will like probably yell at me for transplanting in the sun, but it is cooler temperatures at night. It's actually looking better than it did, um, but you just keep it well watered. And after like a week, it's gonna finally keep itself happy. Uh, but I do love that there. I like the idea of that. And that kind of was an original plan um, to put that somewhere where it's happy. Um, and then I kind of like, I'm moving stuff around because I'm trying to kind of get an idea of space and feel for the garden. So like the grasses, I feel like the grasses are like this soft tuft, although we're not going to see these until late summer. So I have to remember that when I'm putting them in, I kind of moved the hydrangea from this spot, but hmm. I don't know if I like these here, but I like them kind of grouped. So, what do you think? I don't know. I'd go nuts trying to figure this out. Oh my out. God. So when we got home, I have to show everybody this. When we got home today, I'm like over here and I pulled out those daylilies right there. Actually look, right on the lawn behind you. Yes, I know what daylilies. Well, there's a big clump. See the size of that thing? You did that all yourself? Well, they're not hard to come. They're not hard to pull out. Um, and then I'm looking and check this baby out. Look at the size of this praying mantis. This is number two for the season. He's massive. He may even attack me, but look for my hand. So this is the size of my hand. <gasps> oh, I'd love to see him get, I don't want to see him get a bumblebee, but I'd love to see how the way he catches prey. Um, but anyway, he's looking at you. I know he me. is. I he should is tap like, him on the shoulder and be like, Hey buddy, do you know, they turn their heads 180 Say cheese. degrees. Oh no, don't get too close. Hello? He might grab my phone and throw it. Anyway, how big is he? What's on his back? Is I don't know. It, oh, get go back up. You're too close. Stop interfering with things. Oh yeah. Seriously, you're too close. Listen to you. Well, I, you know, I, I like taking pictures and stalking things, but from a dis distance, not from, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. What? From a distance, stalking from a distance. Yes, that's usually what stalkers do. I mean, I stalk, like, you know, certain things don't care, but he, I don't know, he's a little intimidating. Um, the way I see it is it's my property. I pay the taxes, and until he does, I will get as close as I can to him. Well, yeah, but I, I'd like to keep a few of them around. So that means we have two. What if that one's a male, or that one's a female, and the other one was a male? Then one of them's dead at this point. Well, it's possible. But that means we have more, so that's exciting. So one of them has to die if you get your wish, right? Your little pod. Well, they don't overwinter. They overwinter in an egg case, the babies. So yeah, that ha I mean, it's sad, right? Oh, look it, he's gonna get the bee. He's gonna get the bee, he just reached for him. <gasps> he's gonna attack the bee. That's probably why he's here. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna go for it. Oh, I kind of feel bad for the bee. Would you be quiet? Let nature take its course. Oh my goodness, I know, but that poor little guy is doing all he can right now and that thing's gonna take off his head. It may not, it may just be a close encounter. Maybe he doesn't like bees. What? We're watching the praying mantis. He just, might, he just wants it to be a little. To eat a bee or not to eat a bee? That is the question. He blew it. He had a great opportunity and he blew it. Sorry, I don't want to get too close when I'm stalking you, but looks like you're going hungry tonight, buddy. I don't know. That's huge compared to the other one we had. So I don't think he's having any trouble eating or catching. Prey. You guys better watch out. There's praying mantis in the garden. Watch out, Jax. There's a praying mantis over there. Well, he can have Jax. Jax might have him. So what, are you going to clear all that out, too, from these rocks? No, I'm, I, wanted, I wanted to see the rocks. I might actually put more dirt in the rocks and then put more climbing sedum so that it, you know, looks a little better than a pile of rocks we threw there. Because that wasn't really even put together, like, intentionally. 
we threw the rocks there and then it just sort of became this rock pile and then i just made a garden around it <laughs> so and now it's a snake haven yeah but i like how this worked out like this um i planted that little it was a little tiny korean lilac right there and it was short and now it's like kind of this beautiful tall backdrop and it comes down to the intersectional peony and then i have this nice texture uh variegated texture with the iris um you know there's some daylilies in there i'll move those because those are too they're too short number one and i feel like they need to move over just a tad aren't some of your daylilies still in here that your special breed yes yes some of them i put in the cottage garden though they actually got prime prime real estate now and then um when i was pulling um, plants out of the sun garden and dividing up i have some euphorbia starts that i potted up so these get this color foliage generally but they've been kind of in the shade so i'm gonna probably put those in there those are a nice little breakup i like this clump of um i don't remember what this is this is a new plant but there's a you know i built one in this year i can't quite remember what the name of them is but they get these bright red flowers and then they look like strawberry leaves and they have like it kind of looks like they're edged in silver so i don't know so there's a plant you don't you don't know don't exactly what it is i have to dig it and it's hard what there's a plant and you don't know exactly what it is no it's new and honestly i don't have i don't have the ambition to even look at it right now so i'm trying to decide i do think this needs a shrub there i've tried the grasses i do think the shrub needs to go there if this is going to fill in then this you know I think it needs the shrub. I'm striking out with fitting my grasses in, unless I put them one, two, three, or maybe even two. I could put them here. Put one there. Maybe only use two of these guys. And put the other one, because these are shorter grasses. And maybe you just put them on the edge of this garden. And then have like the fountain in the center. Maybe I'd have to lift that up a little bit so the fountain is up higher. But these are gonna grow, you know, kind of wide and this would have to come over a little. And then I would have like some fall interest here when the roses have kind of... Are the goats getting the boot from this? No, I love the goats. Yeah, it doesn't look like you love them too much. come on this side and that would give this a nice rounded kind of soft texture and then in the summer these would just be loaded with with roses i'd have a little fountain in the middle you know what what i think is going to happen is i'm only going to be able to use one shrub either the hydrangea or the wajila so i think i think actually from a spring perspective i think the wajila is gonna be better but then again yeah i think the wajila is gonna win this is also a rebloomer so i would have bloom not only in the spring when it does its thing but it would have rebloom throughout the season so i'll do that and then i'm gonna put some cone flowers in i think some maybe taller taller patches for now until i figure out maybe i can put some low growing perennials in here like the euphorbia um just to see how it shapes up next year and then i can oh you know what else i have is the lamb's ear do you ever write them down like what? a your I've, ideas oh, I've too i don't have to write them down i honestly I, if i write them down then it's like i'm wasting all that time writing when i can just be moving it and figuring it out myself quicker probably so like these they bloom pink and this is such a massive clump of these that I could separate it into worms. Um, I could separate it into probably two sections, maybe. And maybe I put them, you know, in between where the shrubs go. You know, I could also put daylilies back here because the foliage is going to be shorter and then the flowers come up. Let's do that. I'm going to do that. Except I have to figure out which ones I want to put in there. Which ones shall we do? 
These were, which I have to remember, what, what now? It's very hard to tell what color your lily is just from the lily plant itself, right? It's almost impossible, isn't it? It is impossible. I'm just trying to remember, you picked up the last set of lilies and they were the ones that I dug out from where? All these lilies Underneath. you dug out from the cottage garden. On the left or the right side? The left side. From the left side, so I think I want the other ones. So these are gonna be the purple ones. Well, these are, some of these are Stella's, but this is probably, this is purple. Stella for sure. The Stella's I can tell because they're so matted when they grow. Those I can tell. <gasps> oh, look, here's a paper. Pink. What does this say? See, this is how I do things. It's PSI, ladies and gentlemen. Pink day lily, right side of the cottage garden. So guess what? We're gonna go with that. And we're gonna take this massive clump and we're gonna put it there. It's kind of a little similar to the grass, but this looks like, I wonder if I should take some of my expensive daylilies that I just put in the vegetable garden, some of the really like great ones and put them in there. Where are you eventually gonna put them? You're not gonna leave them in your garden, right? No, well I want the, they have to have a, I can't just put one daylily fan here. It's gotta have a clump. Otherwise when it blooms, it doesn't make an impact. So, ooh, I have some white phlox. I'll put some white phlox in. Hold that there. These are all Stella's, so these. Oh! Now, a lot of the reasons you're having a hard time is because you have so many choices, right? Mm -hmm. Most Not people wouldn't fair. have as many choices as you would when and they're designing the garden. Well, or you could pick your, you could pick what you wanted. See, like, I kind of wish these were, I ho kind of hope these are purple, but if they're not, I'd have to move them next year. These are, these are catnip fruits. But and you know what? If you fun. did move them next year, it wouldn't be anything new. Correct. So I'm going to put like some catnip here to spill over, some catnip here because catnip, blooms earlier like this blooms pretty early in the season so isn't putting cat mint near a bird bath kind of defeating the purpose well that is a, a for our cat yes it'll be the bird blood bath now that we have catnip yeah luring all the chickadees to their demise This thing's been yanked out for like four days and it's still got beautiful flowers. So that might come in to play. So yeah, so maybe a little lavender spilling around the edges. The grasses are gonna be shorter. They look tall right now. Yes, this is probably the tallest they'll ever get. And the roses will just fill in, I think here. And then maybe if the bird bath isn't tall enough, I could do a trellis in here with like a um, clematis. So that's also an option for spring if I wanted to do that. But I think I'm gonna plant this. I think I kind of like this idea. Watch out for my goats. <laughs> um, so I think I do. I think I'm gonna, I have to figure out like this is probably gonna come out a little bit. So it's almost on the edge and then I'll have the cat mint spilling. So how many how many years before those rose bushes 
like develop fully? Um, actually, this year they really, actually you can tell. I, so this one did really terrible. It got eaten by deer. It was just like, bleh, it was annihilated. I cut it all the way back. I cut the whole thing back to the ground and this is what happened in a month. So it's starting to put up, it's starting to establish. These looked great up until like 10 days ago when the deer ate them. So that, that one was loaded with buds. So these are gonna, these will be fine. These are gonna fill out next year. I'll have plenty of, look at Japanese beetle. Um, we'll have plenty of, of roses. Oh, I'll put your head. But you're pretty much gonna have to trim these to keep them in line, right? Cause well, this one- Well, the thing is this looks leggy, but I'm not, I'm not cutting anything right now cause I don't want them to encourage it to grow. They have to kind of go dormant. And then in the spring, you'll cut back. This one will probably get cut back all the way because it's got very spindly canes. And if you remember, I had planted those in the patio garden. They, they were not like, they weren't getting enough sun. And so this is gonna be great for them, but they really, they got moved at the end of June, I think, whenever I put this um, rose garden in. So it was really like, I kind of stunted them. I moved them after their roots had wanted to start putting out like nice feeler roots. And then I stuck them in kind of crappy soil. And I was like, there, there's a rose garden and expected them to do great things, but it wasn't fair. So, so that's that. So I think I'm gonna plant this up. I like rose grass, rose grass, rose grass. And I like the cat mint tucked in on the border. So that's my next plan. I'm gonna plant up. Good deal. Well, we'll see you when you're done. Yes. Mom, can I see that? You kids got your working papers? Sure. I know, I hope they're not expecting a paycheck. Maybe dinner. Oh, yeah. Can I have a paycheck for me? What do you got going on here? Uh, I have a root bound grass, which is not uncommon. But yeah, it looks pretty gross. <laughs> it looks oh, really that's gross. what the rock that so, got stuck. Before I plant it, I'm going to rough it up a little because you can't expect the roots to go out and branch out and be productive if they're all tangled in each other. And I'm kind of ripping them and not trying to, but they do have to be like loosened a bit and you'll get there. So when you buy these plants from these box stores. I don't buy from box stores. So I don't know what you think you're trying to say, but I don't buy from box. When you buy plants from someplace and they've been in pots for too long, you sometimes, sometimes you have, you know what? It's really not best to buy the ones that are root bound, but grasses are kind of known for this, especially if they've been in the pots a while. Yeah, but how would you know it would be root bound? I didn't. Well, how would you know if you were going to buy a plant? Cause you can pull it out. Look at this one. You pull it upside down and you hold the dirt with your hands and you can pop off, take the, take, take the pot, Emma. See, that one's not as bad. That one's really bad. Go ahead, put it back on. So you can check like that. The little one gallon pots are easier because you pull them out and you can, you can pull them upside down and hold them and see. Maybe you could get Jax yeah. to help you. It looks like he's got his tongue bound in Cleo's ear over there. Oh, Come on, Jax. <laughs> he likes to taste of earwax. Why do you have my ring in your hand? Go put it on the table. And I mean, put it on the table. Okay. So when I ask Mom, you later, where is it? You can know. Like, huh. This is too hard. This like a oh, come on! You're the same weight as me. You put some put some muscle behind it, boy. Got to work for that allowance, right? kid. You think it's easy to garden, huh? So that, I like the way this is looking. It does look so pretty good. There. So then you have to go around it. I know. There's no way to go around it. Really? There you go. I just popped it out. Thank you. This is generation, I tell you. Got to show them everything. No, you don't. Uh, I help make this party. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. So we're actually making progress, folks. I don't think you're, she's going to be moving these plants now that they're planted. Uh, I probably should change the clothes. Good thing I don't like to dress in dresses and all fancy clothes all that often. You don't have to dress fancy, honey. Oh, yeah? How? I think they're all, 
audience like me filming more than my dad. Oh, hear that? I heard comments that I'm a good filmer. Yes, you, yes, so you were, you were quite good. That's because you don't ask your mother the difficult questions like dad does. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm more quiet. Yeah, I know. And less annoying. And less annoying, yes, thank you, son. Ooh, did you hear that owl? I swear, we live in like the safari. I was like, what is that noise? So I'll have to probably pull this rock border out a little to get the oh, cat to work, but. Mom, here, I'll help. Those rock I wanna hear, here. I wanna hear the owl. Ooh. Who? Oh. I wanna hear the owl. Who wants to hear the owl? I wanna hear the owl. Who? I hear a crow. Jax. Can you please, Jax? Leave that poor girl alone. Stop he, planning like your you. tongue. He's like you. What he's do you like, mean? No, he won't leave her alone. I leave no, you alone. Never. I don't ever nibble in your ear like that. Oh my God. Thank God. I might blow in your ear once in a while, but I'm a blow hard. Right, Emily? All right, Mommy, it's looking good. To be continued. Looks like someone's working overtime tonight. Well, I'm trying to get it done. I know, I'm, I'm a little like, I'm a little in the middle of everything too. It's all right, I made dinner for the kids. What a guy. Heavenly hash, it went over well. Ice cream? Yeah. So look, so I actually had perennial herbs in the garden, the vegetable garden, which, you know, the boxes are kind of crappy this year. So, but they overwinter. So look, this is the tricolor sage. Actually, and so is that. I think this is a golden something. Anyway, they're both sage and they're perennial. So they're gonna come back. So the deer won't eat them because they stink. They're terrible, they smell terrible. And I have golden oregano. And this just outgrew, totally outgrew its spot. Look at the size of that slug. I just pulled it right off the top of there. Gross. Anyway, so what happened is, because I'm using all these plants that I had left over, there's a lot of green, like just plain green. And yes, I'm gonna get bloom, but what I like is that, see how this is like a, a pop of lime and then the variegation pops. And then I have a little bit of variegation in the sage. That works. I kind of like that because it, it just moves your eye and it draws and there's interest in the garden. So like, you know, it changes texture a little bit. I kind of like it. It's definitely coming along. So it's not finished and I'm really um, trying to use things that I have already, which is a little difficult if you're trying to do a foliage change up in the garden. So um, I'm trying to work with what I have. And honestly, the herbs are getting too big for where they um, were growing anyway. So why not put them in here? Cause the deer won't eat them anyway. So I like this. Cause then it provides a little bit of a change. Even if stuff's not in bloom, it's going to look a little bit cool. Right. And then this around here, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta mulch it in. The roses kind of look like hell right now, but the, the grasses are, you know, doing their thing. I think I'm gonna like this corner. It's gonna kind of fill in. And then I did put the Wajila right after the rose part. I put it in here. So this will tuck in, or this will, it's tucked in right now, but it will actually expand and grow and get pretty big and bloom. So I'll have a nice, like kind of nice structure there. I put some cone flowers to the left and right of the butterfly bush. Those are, those are the cone flowers that I pulled thinking they had asters yellow. So they got cut back to nothing and now they're starting to regrow from the roots. Uh, so I put those in there just because I, you know, cone flowers have to go in. And I decided to go with the hydrangea in the back. So and I, I ended up, I was gonna put the wajila there and I ended up putting them by the roses and the hydrangea I just think is gonna be, I can just picture this big and beautiful and in bloom um there and i think it's going to be a nice backdrop with the cone flowers so i like this i i, I think i'm going to add maybe daylilies here 
day lilies behind the oregano and just leave it for the year. I have a ton of day lilies. What am I going to do with all these? I don't know. It definitely looks great, especially in the light. Well, tomorrow morning, we're going to... I want to do a picture or a video um, showing people what it looks like from the upper window too because I keep saying I'm going to do that and I haven't done it all day. So not bad for starting the edging last night and then getting all of this done. Like this is kind of a one day garden creation um, or expansion I should say because the rock garden was done. And then we just moved, well I just pulled everything out of the rock garden and rearranged, added a couple new things pulled from the herbs. I can't believe I haven't thought of that before. Um, the herbs are perennial and honestly, they're pretty. They have variegation, they smell good, they're deer resistant because deer hate aromatics. So why not plug those in? And look at the size of the clumps. They're, they're pretty decent. So, I like the one over here. The oregano? Yeah. Looks good. Are you being smart? Well, I was kind of showing off my shadow that was down there, but I don't know. Yeah, we may definitely have to film this tomorrow. And I wasn't being smart. I do like it. Yeah. No, it I like good. how you incorporated those colors, especially like right now it's hard to see. It's night. Yeah. Well, tomorrow it's not going to be done today, but um, I'm, when I move all this out and clean it up and we'll do a shot from overhead, uh, you, you know, it's a young garden. So the thing about putting gardens in, you know, everybody will say like, for example, my sun garden, they want my sun garden. If I were to put that in as a young garden, it would look nothing like that. That's mature. So this is gonna be also immature and you have to just give it time to establish. So I expect this to be like two, three years before it really starts filling in and I'll, then I'll start to see where I have to move things. Um, if the grasses are too close to the roses, if the roses just don't do well here, I'll take them out and put something else. So everything else is pretty, I know it's going to do well because it's been here and it's overwintered in raised beds. So I know it'll do fine. Um, and now I just have to find a spot for all these day lilies. Oh, I'm sure you'll find a spot. Yeah, I'm not creating anything else this year. I'm done. I'm tired. No. I am tired. I'm whooped. I'm probably frazzled. Oh, Actually, watch out. And by the way, the, the praying mantis, it caught a bumblebee. So, God, I was so excited about that thing. So if we stuck around a little <sighs> longer, we could have caught some carnage on video. I did. I filmed it. I filmed it. Yeah. I heard it crunching the insides of the bumblebee out. It's. It was actually, this, like, it was, like, fascinating because I saw how they just rip open like they're like little dinosaurs they just rip open their prey but i felt bad because that bumblebee's probably been there all season and i love my bumbles so i was like you know it wasn't my favorite thing to see but i learned what they do i don't know if i'd want a ton of praying mantis here unless they're gonna start chowing on japanese beetles but i learned today wasn't wasn't one of those like oh my god i'm so excited moments but it's the circle of life it's nature i know but he could have he could have chose something i don't like sometimes it becomes a square box can i just put things like can i collect a bunch of japanese beetles and put them on a little tray and be like here feast i'd fill them up on that well it'd be cool if we could actually get the praying mantis to take care of all the creatures we don't want around here i mean but... maybe he did maybe i just caught that one and he's been eating grasshoppers and Perhaps it was a carpenter bee and you got confused. No, it was a bumblebee. You sure? It was fuzzy. Did yes. you see and like I know. wood dust coming know the, out of its gut? I know what the difference is between a carpenter bee and a bumblebee. I, I'm, I know 1000% it was a bumblebee. One has honey in the gut. One has sawdust in the gut. What did you see? I saw the spiny little fuzzy part of his butt being chewed by the freaking praying mantis. You got it on video, though? We did. Oh, we'll have to check. Look at Yeah. Let's check it out. It's like... Did you commentate? Um, I was a little disturbed. I'm sure I made comments like, oh, I can hear it crunching. And I still watched. I, I mean, I, I learned. I'm learning. But I just, it wasn't one of the best garden moments, I can tell you that. 
Well, at <sighs> this point, I think we're all, you know, numb to it in any, anyway. All the stuff you see out here in the garden with the bluebirds and, yeah. you know, what do you think birds eat? They eat insects. I know. You know, I know a couple cool crickets I, I ran into. You think I like Oh, yeah, them? you and Jiminy making friends? Well, I like right, crickets. All right, I gotta clean this stuff up. Ugh. All right, babe. You did great. Mm. Onward. You're the best. Watch out for that praying mantis. You ain't worried about me. Okay, as promised. So this is the view from upstairs. And one thing you can do is check the shape of your garden and make sure that you like what's happening, like how it's shaping up. And honestly, I'm okay with this. Um, it might have a pretty steep point here, right there. You see how it's like kind of peaking there? I might soften that a little bit to soften that edge up just a tad. But other than that, I kind of like how it's looking got that sort of kidney bean shape which is sort of signature here for some reason I think it just works and it's an island bed so you know it is viewable from all sides but primarily from the interior which is near like where you would enter the vegetable garden so I'm liking it so far not bad for a dig and divide garden adding I added a few new things but the rest of it I'm pretty okay with the shape of this as I see it. Let's go over to the other window. It needs, ooh, it needs to be opened up. And as you can see, it kind of follows suit with the, the cottage garden revamp that I did. Added the vent. Kind of love the way that's shaping up. And then also the sun garden, same meandering borders. Um, I do love the rock border, but I don't have enough rocks to go around all my gardens. It's too bad, but just the way it is. If I did have that rock border, I might actually have smaller gardens because moving the rocks to expand is a bigger deal than just edging. <laughs> but anyway, so that's that. So I like the way that that's shaping up. Can't really see it from the uh from this angle because this big lilac is sort of in the way but if i can get yeah can't quite see that garden bed from this angle but so i like that have i have that island bed i have that cottage garden in the way back and then the sun garden here so looks good to me